Welcome to Holly Terminator X Training Part 29. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at working with our open loop style boost control in our software. Now, our open loop control simplifies the boost tuning process. We don't have to worry about closed loop routine, and Holly actually wants you to integrate a dome pressure based boost control, which is a bit more complicated. I'm going to simplify this entire process. This is going to be more applicable to the average street car rather than going and purchasing a dome pressure sensor and going through the closed loop routine. We will take a look at that in the next video, but we're going to be simplifying things again and just going in and taking a look at how to integrate this with some of our advanced programming functionality within the software. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our open loop style boost control in our Holly Terminator X systems. We're going to find that we aren't able to run open loop control in the programming from Holly right off the bat here, what they're going to give us in our boost ICF in order to manipulate our boost control. If we're dealing with the HP or Dominator systems, we have a lot more flexibility, but the Terminator X is stripped down with some of our software features. And one of those features is allowing us to simplify the boost control routine and running it in open loop. This is where we need to get creative and find a way around some of the programming that Holly has implemented here for the Terminator X. I'm going to show you how to do that in this particular video. First thing we need to do though is go in and bring in our boost ICF so we can talk about some of the limitations that are in place here and how to get around them. So the first thing we need to do is jump into our toolbox, jump into add individual config, jump down here to our folder labeled boost, and then go here to default boost. So we're going to select that option and click open. Now we find that we have our boost ICF icon here. If I click on this, it now opens up my boost setup and my dome control setup and some of my control routines here for the boost control. Now, if we look here, first and foremost, we're going to get this out of the way. If we look in our system setup, we're going to find we have our wastegate type. Right now, it's set for dual port dome pressure control. And the control method here is set for dome pressure control. If we go to our drop down, we can't select anything other than dual port dome pressure control. And in our control method, again, we can't select anything other than dome pressure control. So we're, we're limited to what we can do here. And essentially, Holly wants us to run our boost control in full closed loop format. If we go here to our dome control setup, and we take a look at our controller setup here in our PID terms, we're forced to use closed loop dome pressure control. We can't go in and go about this in an open loop control as we found what we could do with the HP and the Dominator system. So the Terminator X is a bit specific of how it wants you to work with the boost control. And in fact, if we take a look here at something like our boost versus time, it's going to be based on dome pressure and not based on just basic duty cycle output to control a boost solenoid. So that's going to be a huge issue. So again, we have to go and add a dome pressure sensor into our, uh, into our uh, wastegate, and we're going to have to go in, and uh, add, add, which drives up the expense and, and, and makes it a little bit more complicated, ties up an input to our Holly box. Um, in my personal opinion, the dome pressure control really is not needed for a streetcar. We don't need to go and work with this. We don't necessarily have to have closed loop control. We can simplify this and uh, just go about our boost control strategy in a different way, which is going to be this open loop method we're going to discuss and take a look at this video. So before we go in here to talk about any specifics or setup and configuration, let's first talk about how to properly set up a three port boost solenoid, depending on what kind of wastegate type you're working with. It's going to be very important that we set this up properly mechanically or in, in order to make the boost control work as we're expecting. So first things first, we're going to have a boost solenoid. We can work with a three or four port boost solenoid. I recommend to work with a three port boost solenoid. When you are working with your turbocharged engine, you want to increase the boost. You'll find that you have to place a wastegate actuator a level or a wastegate spring in your external wastegate. So wastegate, wastegate actuator is going to be our internal wastegate, and then their external wastegate is going to have a spring that we place inside of it. On an internal wastegate, we replace the wastegate actuator if we want a stronger actuator to build more boost. In an external wastegate, we replace the spring. It's going to be the difference between an internal and an external wastegate. So first thing right off the bat here, we have to realize that if we have a 10 pound actuator or 10 pound spring, we can typically double or triple that actuator or that spring level with a three port boost solenoid. So if you're trying to figure out what spring or what actuator to choose for your application, if you have, let's say a 10 pound spring or 10 pound actuator, you can at least get 20 pounds of boost out. Sometimes you can get 30 pounds of boost out. You can go about two to three times higher than the actuator or spring is rated at. And, and again, using our three port control. So that's going to help you decide what spring to place into your wastegate to get started. Now, the other thing we need to keep in mind with boost control is that we can't turn down the boost. Whatever your spring pressure is going to be at, that's the mechanical lowest limit that we can have our boost at. So if you put a five pound spring, we can't go to two pounds. If you put a 10 pound spring, 
We can't go to six pounds. We only can increase beyond that actuator or spring level in your wastegate assembly. So also keep that in mind in your spring selection. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.